Hey there, Flyers. Welcome. This is brought to you by 69th Snowboard Detachment. Today we're going to talk really briefly about gyros and how gyros work. Or at least the type of one that I got in my drone and maybe the one you got in your drone. There's a sensor. These magnetic lines of flux. And using the Coriolis effect, this sensor detects that, capacitively couples it through. Remember, with capacitance, it's going to do two things. It's going to block any DC on the line that's like maybe lurking from that antenna from detecting it. And it's going to pass the effects AC. So you're going to take that little thing, that filtered signal now, it's our, it's also filtered. It's basically, there's, this acts like a resistor, that acts like a capacitor, that makes an RC filter. So basically what happens is uh, you've kind of also made a little bit of a filter. You've got a low noise amplifier in here, and what it's going to do is it's going to amplify that signal without amplifying noise to keep the same signal to noise ratio. And basically what's going to happen then, you're going to go into a demodulator. And that demod is going to just look at the varying parts of that carrier, of that signal, and it's going to de decode it into uh, that RF carrier that's varying in frequency and phase. It's going to decode it into just a straight analog signal down here in the voltage range and not in the, so much in the frequency range. What's going to happen from that point, you're just going to take and filter that, do some signal processing. That analog signal, make sure we don't got other noise picked up from the rest of the drone. And we're going to send it off to a 16-bit A to D converter. And with 16 bits, it's got, it can put out a pretty good digital word. It, uh, each, you know, sample can be a big digital word. So just uh, real briefly, say you got a signal. And I'm sampling it here. And I'm sampling it here. And I'm sampling it here. And if I got two bits to represent this, say you got three bits to represent this. That's two to the third, or two times two times two, it's eight. I got eight possible levels that I can do. But if I've got more, I've got two because it's binary. But if I got two to the next, even next level up, two to the fourth, two times two times two times two, two, right, is 16. Now I've doubled my accuracy because I got 16 levels in there. And well, this good old uh, A to D converter. It is not 2 to the uh, 4th, it's 2 to the 16, because it's 16-bit 16 converter. So it can have a very fine, you know, number of levels. So it can be very accurate. So that when you reproduce the signal, you take just a bunch of pulses, and you connect the dots. And there's a little bit of quantizing noise that you can't, you know, depending on your sampler rate, you can't get exactly... And all that quantizing noise is less the more accurate your sample, you know, the more accurate your levels are, and the more often your sampling is. So this thing is sampled, it's got a 16 bit A to D, and it's sampled at 8 kilohertz, 8,000 times a second. So you figure, you know, even if it's the highest frequency that's gonna be, uh, you know, detected from this, because there's not a lot of movement. That means it will have sampled it many, many times. So that when it tries to recreate it, it has many, many digital words. Each of these is a byte or a digital word, maybe two, an octet, you know, or a, a double octet, because there's two bytes to represent each level. So this baby's just pumping out data. And that goes to the processor, and at which point the IMU or in the flight controller that can determine, okay, here's my gyro, here's my position. All based off of this little piezo-resistive coupling and the Coriolis effect. And yeah, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. We'll see you all for the next schematics. Bye now.